Okay, so this was the MaskRom Z8, which I just pulled out of the profile. In its place, I put in the uh, 4K XROM uh, Z8 microcontroller with the piggyback, and we put on top, on top of that a TMS2732 um, EEPROM, which over on bitsavers.com there is in the Apple disk profile uh, firmware folder. There's uh, two image files. One that's uh, marked for 10 megabyte low level formatting and the other one which I'm not entirely sure about but it doesn't seem to be low level formatting and when you compare the two images they're not the same thing. So I've put that one onto an EEPROM and I've thrown it into here and well it's weird. Um, it, it behaves a lot better now but it still has that buzzing and those problems here. So I'm just going to spin the drive up. You'll be able to see what it kind of looks like when it turns on, which is it goes to track zero, goes all the way out, and then goes ready. And then I'm going to turn the Lisa, and we're going to start up basic Lisa utility and run the exercise program. Also, I have the gain completely cranked up, so you might be hearing uh, the ticking sound of the uh, stepper here actually stepping. And if you listen really closely right now, there's a bit of a 60 hertz hum. I'm not entirely sure where that's coming from. Everything here is properly grounded, so something's a little bit iffy. But uh, here we go. Okay, it is now gone ready, so let's turn on the Lisa and run the utility. Okay, so, uh, utility disk in, power on. And that little attempt there was the system tried to boot, so it didn't find anything because the disk is just so trashed, and it gave me an error 84 here. But I'm just gonna tell it instead to start up from the floppy disk. And that brings up the basic Lisa Utility. Absolutely fantastic program. Um, see where it says sigma7systems.com slash blu. Get it there. This is a slightly older version of the utility, but it's amazing. And I want the hard disk utilities. We will do the exercise test disk, which basically does the whole uh, seek from end to end thing again that we saw before. And it'll show you a couple of cool things along the way. We are the built-in parallel port. And I don't care about the contents of the data on this drive, so let's go. And you see how right off the bat, we had the seek to wrong track count go up to one. The reason is there is that it needed to step to track zero before it could start. But, all because of all that buzzing and all that misstepping that was going on, it stepped so many times, expected track zero, and didn't get it.
so it just kept on stepping and then it reached track zero and now it starts. The command count, which you see flying up there, is actually every single time it's told at the step. Now, what was supposed to happen there was that when it reached the end, the test should have completed. Instead, it's decided to start all over again, and it should have been one smooth pass all the way back to track zero, but again it wasn't, and as you can see, the seek to wrong track count has gone up again. But this is my frustration, but we're not going to do this again, so I'm just going to do clear, any key, we're done here. This is just a good sample of what my problems are right now. Um, I guess if you're watching out there and you do have a much better idea than I do of what might be going on here, um, please don't hesitate to tell me in the comments here. As well here. Um, also just struck across my mind while I was waiting here, it could also be the socket because we have gotten a little bit more reliable in terms of seeking now that I've switched the Z8 around. That could still mean the wrong, that the chip was bad. Um, it's another variable. I don't know. Anyways, thanks for watching.